the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. How good is that? It is Fitzy and Weather with Kate Ritchie. It's your Thursday podcast. Married at first sight. Oh you know, we've God. steered quite clear of it this year, haven't we? We've been... Well, I feel like I've... Disinterest? No, it's... I just... I you do, needed a break, did you, mate? Well, I, we, Detox. We've gone hard for the last few yeah. years. And it, you know, it, it stresses me out to see all the other couples hooking up with each other and the cheating that goes on and the screaming and the gaslighting, Kate. Look, I think, though, that with maths, you decide not to be part of it. And then, like an old lover, yep. it drags so. you back in. And as soon as you're sitting in front yeah. of the television, yeah. Yeah. like that old lover, yeah. you're thinking... What Ooh, the hell am go, I doing back yeah, here? One more, you know, hit. Just I one more hit. I cannot stay away. Oh, yep. Do you know what I heard too? Am I allowed to say this, Tommy? Uh, Stuff it, I'm going to go for oh, it. No. Don't don't it. Say it. They're do thinking it. about say doing it. a celebrity version of maths and Kate Ritchie, I believe, is are to they, be on Are they the honestly show. thinking about <laughs> doing not. that? Yeah. No one would do it. I, it's and they said Kate's a definite. Yeah! That is the one reality show I would come back for. Yeah, I would oh. too. Oh, you know, I, damn it, I, I'm already, already married. married. Yeah. married. Jess, can we get Kate's reaction again when they got the phone call? Wow, we. Like we. I could play <laughs> a gherkin in my mouth for hours. What? That was my audition oh, yeah. tape. Oh. Oh. I'm not going on maths. Shiny we, disco ball. Oh. Oh. Call them what you want. What about a conversation between Kate Ritchie and Alan Jones? Oh, what would that, is that like? I mean, Kate would have just been Hello, clean. Yeah. Oh. Horny, horny, horny. So that's Kate on Pop and Alan. Pop that beat, trunk, right in this little garage. Come on, ramp it up. So it's going to be a weird, weird season. I know, stay. <laughs> Wait, they, they haven't been able to get me in the jungle. They're not going to get me on that. Oh, well, Alan Jones the moment has. when Alan turns around on the aisle and there's Kate Ritchie would be on the Come on, ramp it up. We will, Alan. Leave it with me. Enjoy the podcast. <laughs> This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Kate, you have a, you had a lot of homeschooling and that growing up as well, but dodgy teachers. Dodgy teachers. And you know what? You crack. You get to a point with kids. I mean, we have our own kids. Kate, you only have one. I only have, I have two. You, can, we, you have three. I've I'm never not, cracked I crack at home. I've never cracked. No, at you once. don't strike me as a guy who would crack. No it. way known. And remember back in the day, like in in schools, you would have thirty kids in a class. Yeah. I, I don't know. Some of the mothers who are teachers at my daughter's school, I think. You've dealt with this class all day and then you have to go home to, like, three kids of your own. How do you keep it together? I've often said there's two things I hate in this world. One is racism and the other one is other people's kids. Um, So when you're a teacher Uh, and you've got 30, right, of those that aren't yours Mm. and they're treating you like rubbish, how do you keep your head together? This is why they need to get paid more. And I think Mm. we're we're losing a lot of teachers at the moment, but they do... do, and for any kid, it is some of the, it's the greatest when it when a teacher cracks because you've got to them. Yeah. Well, because you know it's like a member of the family. You know their little triggers. Their buttons. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Tell us about a dodgy teacher story. There's been a couple. Well, one it was here in Australia, up in Queensland. Anyone see the explicit calendar that the teachers oh. put together? Bit of fun or out of line. They put it up in the staff room. Whose idea was that? I mean, one of the guys was just in his budgies, wasn't he? No. With his foot up, was he cross dressed, or yeah. what was he wearing? Or in a nun's outfit? Was that the photo? Yeah. I thought it was a. I just assumed it was a politician. I it didn't even read the <laughs> another story. I think another one was on all fours no. and had a dog collar around oh. his neck, while another one was Dad. On the leash. Oh. Oh. Come on, maths has started. Okay, this is another one in Albuquerque, New Mexico, over in the US, and a teacher's rocked up and said, "You know what? We're going to do something different in science today." Here's a couple of swords. Off you go, kids. Oh, the, we've got a LG teacher. No, there's, 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 oh, there's a grab. grab. Sorry, Jess. You this, there, there's Jess? a news story that will tell you about okay. this. So, what? Two swords in class? This is it. Teenagers fighting with swords inside a chemistry classroom at Volcano Vista High School. The teacher is seen here resting her hip against a podium, watching her students charge each other with weapons. The civil lawsuit states that the teacher set a two-minute timer for each sword fight and claims that once the student was injured, the teacher said, quote, I'm in trouble, and ordered her students to delete any videos of the incident. 
There's no least evidence. She was in charge. No need she, was, she was keeping time. What it did, wasn't as if she just let them run a mark. What are two swords? Left. What are two swords got to do with science? I love this. I mean, kids, I'm, if you're the teacher and you're sick of being picked on, hey, beat yourselves up. Here's a couple of swords. Go for it. Uh, Eamon and St. Clair, you had a dodgy teacher, Eamon? Yeah, mate, um, I was uh, I was in year 10 and we had a substitute teacher for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, they decided for some unknown reason to split the classes. So they have boys' class and a girls' class. Yep. Um, and then anyway, the teacher's coming in. All the boys started speaking pig Latin. So we're just throwing a few words around. And then she decided to chime in and she goes, I'll show the up, uh, oh. up. And, <laughs> mate, Everyone looked around, and we just go, "What the hell just happened then?" Basically, and everyone carried on, and yeah. mate, we all got kicked out of class. And then the next day, we walked in, and the head teacher was there, and she goes, "We haven't got a phone call. Get to my office now." And the whole class stood up besides one student. Oh, and, uh, mate, yeah, it wasn't too good. So she basically said to the kids, "Shut the." Up. Oh, man, oh, that is. But in Pig Latin, thanks, you can get away with that, can't you? I don't think it was. <laughs> Erica and Jamboree, tell us about your teacher. Well, I, I've actually got a couple, really. I just thought of another one. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we used to have a geography teacher at school, and um, at lunchtime, he used to go into his white ute, parked on the street so everyone could see, and he would. Um, Put the windows right up and um, get into some of the, mm. the funny stuff. Some of the local herbs. The windows would all smoke up. The old magic dragon at lunchtime. He would have come back very relaxed after lunch, Erica. We never, ever got in trouble. He was the first in. He was trying to push the other kids out of the way at the, the, tuck shop. the front of the tuck <laughs> shop queue. Lauren in Avalon, dodgy, dodgy teacher. She's got a dodgy nun, Lauren. Yeah, yeah. Her name was uh, Sister Rock. Mm. And she was this big Brutus of a nun who took no no prisoners. <laughs> and, it, and she just used to pick up kids if they were annoying her and go, are you deaf, dumb, stupid, or all three? And she'd pick them up and hang them at the back of the room on the on the bag hook. Oh, my just, gosh. <laughs> And her name, yeah, no joke, her name was Sister Keepers, but that means rock in, in Latin. Oh, she, she sounds like something so out of Matilda. So rock. she would hang you up on the bag oh hooks at the back? That's a scene out of and a kid's film. School, 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 just hang you at the back. Did Whoa. anyone see the grandma yesterday who got caught on the security door? What did she do? Up? Oh, yeah, that was oh, hilarious. Oh, poor Nana. <laughs> it's like poor a dog at a lift. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Nan just getting lifted up. She had a dog up. with her too. Mm-hmm. And then even the dog was looking at her going, what are you doing? The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Let's talk about Merit at First Sight. Do you know what I've picked up? I think this show's a bit of a dog's breakfast. What do you mean? Um, I, I Look, I don't know. It, it kicked off last night. Now, before we get into the main bit, which is we found out Sarah was cheating. And I don't even know who she's with. What? Tim. Yes, okay, but before we do that, remember we were speaking about this yesterday and Jack rocked up. Everyone was down at the pool yeah. having a great trip away. Mm. Jack rocks up. He's a personal trainer. Tristan, he's body conscious. Yeah, he didn't want to take his T-shirt off. Didn't want to get his top off. And then he did get his top off and Jack, just a, a, a fleeting comment, said, oh, God, I see the whales are here. That's Some, not fair. Tim, Tim heard that. Mm. Then uh, there was massive blood. <laughs> Last night on the show at the dinner party, Jack, as an apology, grabs Tristan, says, mate, can you come with me? I just need to say a few words to you. Sits him down and... Everyone's waiting for a huge apology, yeah. maybe a, a letter that he wrote to him. Which is due. This is this is what he gave Tristan for the for the whale comment. I've got something for you. I'll uh, start you with this one. <laughs> What's this? A gift card for a supplement store. Oh, my God. It's not bad. And maybe a 10 past gym <laughs> membership as a personal trainer. A gift card for a supplement Has store. Has somebody talked Jack into doing this? <laughs> they, he's thought, I should apologise to Tristan for the whale That's, comment. And they're like, nah, nah, you know what would be really Get good? him on the man show. You should offer him some private <laughs> training is, lessons. That, and is, a bit so of bad. Oh. that is so bad. Hey, while we're here as well, we, we forgot as well, but uh, Kate and I got you 10 classes to the uh, Zumba in Rose Bay. Mm. I have nothing to... Don't you dare. I have nothing to do with that. Zumba fitness. 
Yeah. Ten complimentary. Yeah, and Rose Bay, it's, it's starting to take off, Zumba. I, I, mate, so, that's, that's so kind. I'm, I'm not sort of a Zumba kind of guy, but I tell you what, I've got to have a good look at it. I, it, it didn't stop there, though. It wasn't just the supplement store card, the voucher, Kate. He also got him something else, Jack. And I also got you this as well, bro. A little key ring. I've engraved it. You are enough. You are enough. Oh, my God. Get to f- Oh. I like Jack. He's playing it up, isn't he? He has to be playing it up. You this are can't enough. Be real. You are enough. I do like that saying. Yeah. I mean, let's not take the mickey out no, of that. No, it's you a know. very good saying because you are enough, I Kristen. am enough. I, I am enough. enough. Um, you, okay, now we now have to get on to Sarah. So there's a fair bit going on here. Okay, um, let me find Sarah on our Sarah's list with of Tim. Maths. What, we're, what we're doing now, so Eden on the show, she found out that Sarah, one of her friends on the show, there's a text message involved and she had to tell, you know, because Sarah's with Tim and she thought, I need, th-, and everyone's been in this situation before, what do you do when you find out something about somebody else's relationship? Do you go and tell the person and be honest and say, look, you need to tell this person this or else we're going to tell them yeah. or do you let it go? We've all been in this situation before. Eden had to sit down, Sarah and Tim, last night and this is what happened. I feel like Jaden and I have been arguing and tiffing for like a whole week now. Last weekend, we were texting mm-hmm. and Jaden saw a message on my phone yeah. from you and I'm not willing to protect you over losing Jaden. So I'm going to give you the opportunity now to tell Tim what you did last weekend. Otherwise, we will do it. He's seen the messages. We will tell him if you don't tell him, Sarah. Oh, I love these situations. What has she done? If you have been in this situation before, 13, 20, 10, when you found out something about someone else's relationship and you had to sit them down and say, you tell them... Or we're going to tell them. Sarah or J- Sarah and Jaden hooked up, did they? No. What's happened? Oh my God! So who's hooked up? Sarah, the weekend before, got a text message from her ex, and she's she's gone and met the ex. Uh, did we did she, we see that, or did we just no, hear about? No, that? but she told Tim that she's doing something else. She went and met up with the ex and a few other friends. She said nothing happened. Yeah. But then at the dinner table, they found out. They found out that she may have hooked up with the ex just before she went on the show. I did sleep with my ex while he had a partner. Yes, I did. This is this guy. This is this guy, yes. It's just questionable morals. It is. It's a question of ethics and morals. Ethics and morals. So then then Sarah... Sarah, (laughs) Reading straight from the sheet. Sarah gets her back up and starts gaslighting everyone else. So she slept with her ex. Who has a girlfriend. Who has a girlfriend. This is just before she went in. Then met up with him while she was on Married at First Sight. And then she starts gaslighting. Sliding everyone else. Have you ever cheated on a partner? Are you, are you calling me out? No, but Ooh. have you ever cheated on a partner? Tell me off. She did what she did. You said it's questioning my morals. It is. It's cheating on me. It's on the weekend. Right. Okay, guys, can I just say, you guys are questioning my morals and my character, but how many of you at this table have cheated on a partner? Raise your Oh, wow. So you want to do, have you cheated on the partner with a bad accent? <laughs> oh. How annoying is that? Hey, do you know what happened in our friendship group? But we were all so close yeah. that the guys took the cheater aside and said, mate, doesn't sit well with us. Sort of as a group, it doesn't sit well. We know this is going on. Yeah. So look, you've got to the end of the weekend. It happened actually on a weekend away. So you've got to the end of the weekend to let her know oh. or we will. And he what? did. He did, did. And yeah. Ha- and and they, was she happy that you'd told her? Because sometimes well, he it can back. Her. Sorry, it, it can sometimes backfire. Yeah, would you know what happened? They they had a break and then they got back together. And now they're married with three kids. So okay. I suppose that was a great result. Are you talking about you? No, oh, <laughs> no, it is. Uh, they got two. They got two boys, uh, about eight, seven, and a little girl, Francesca, who's three and a half. <laughs> An amazing story. MM, you um, put your hand up before. You said you had a story about something that happened to you with another guy here at the Christmas party. No, no. Incorrect. Um, oh, no, sorry. I'm it's very it. incorrect. Um, no, no. Back when I was at uni, I was living in a share house and one of the girls um, who I was quite good friends with had sort of been seeing her boyfriend for um, like a 12, 18 months. And then she started a new job and decided to also... Her boyfriend was... Um, he had to go away a lot of the time yeah, during the weeks for yeah. his uni course. Yeah. 
Um, so she decided Monday to Friday she would start seeing her boss um, bring him over at our house and then Friday they would do the changeover. Boss would leave in the morning, boyfriend Swapsies. would come back in the afternoon. Wow. And so oh. after sort of, we sort of mentioned to her a couple of weeks in, we were like, this isn't cool. Yeah. After a couple of months, sat her down and said, we will give you until the end of the week to tell the boyfriend what's gone on or we will tell him and she didn't so we did oh so can you tell us how that chat went and what did you actually say how do you break that news uh it very so i called her beforehand and said with the time's up basically i'm really sorry because we were friends with the boyfriend as well so it was and we were feeling guilty all of us were sitting in there watching this happen week by week and so basically told her and said it's happening and then called when he came up for the weekend sat him down and said need to let you know this is what's been happening we gave her the opportunity to tell you and she hasn't and we just don't think it's right and they very promptly broke up did you hook up with him no it does sound tactical and it sounded like you tried to ruin that relationship for your own personal sabotage is not (laughs) what Emma does breaking news though she did (laughs) Adam (laughs) in Balgola um tell us about a friend what what was the situation Adam yeah, well, what, oh, you guys, what happened was uh, a mate bought his English bride back and then, you know, uh, they were living in Australia and then a year later they'd had, they'd had a child. A year later, he he up and left and, and no one could understand what the hell was going on and why he left and um, what happened. We, a couple of mates, we got together and we thought, oh, let's just go and catch up and have a beer with him, see how he's going. You know, he's going through a breakup. We'll try and console him. Oh, no. And that question was asked, do, you know, is there anyone else? What, what, why have you left? Is there, is, have you left for somebody else? No, 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 no one, no, just, just you know, all this dribble. Yep. Um, and this guy was a, a constant liar, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So he, he just lied nonstop, and he couldn't remember what his lies were. Oh, no. But anyway, he, um, he, he said, no, there was no one. There was someone he'd hooked up with someone from work. Um, he'd he'd you know been caught with uh, out on you know visa visa card statements yep. from restaurants or whatever oh. in his jacket pocket. Um, and we gave him that opportunity to talk to us. He didn't. And so you we're did a good it for him. Bunch of close mates. So we just said that's it, and we don't see him now. Oh, wow. Haven't for years. So it would be really. You know, Sitting down with a group of friends and going, okay, we're going to, all right, he's had a week, he's had a week, but he hasn't done it. Yeah. We've got to sit her down. How do you do that, Kate? I mean, do you go to a nice restaurant? Where do you do it? What's the setting? You need to do it in the privacy. What do you wear? What do you wear that night? Isn't it interesting too? Is it smart casual or? It is smart casual, I think, most definitely, but it's interesting that always seems to be somebody from work. Um, that they're cheating on. I'm just sort of looking around the well, room and my eyes have caught Jess's. Oh, what? Um, no, wait up. Wait up. This? I would hate to fall into the trap of... Didn't you marry walk- someone oh, from right, work mate. whilst you no, were I with didn't someone? Have a girl- no. You had a girlfriend at the time? Did you? No, when I you took did. Lisa oh, to Chinatown that, China that, that night. Is, that was oh, disgusting, wasn't Tom, it? And everyone was talking about it in the office. Yeah, you married someone from work as well, well Tom. Well, Tom, we gave <laughs> him is. an ultimatum. Yeah. You, you tell... <laughs> yep. You tell Lily or else... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I stuck to name oh, You tell no. your co-host to stop using names <laughs> and then we're all oh, going to no. be fine. Oh, no. I'm so... I'm, I'm not so, here. Oh, I'm I, not Tom, here. Tom, are we live on air? Oh, is this a rehearsal? This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is exciting because Virgin Airline has said, you know what we need more of? Pets on a plane. <laughs> You'll see this on page nine of the paper. They've said... A big story. I think it's the story of the story of the day. day, Kate. There's no question over the story of the day. Virgin Australia wants to become the country's first airline to operate domestic flights allowing pets in the cabin from next year. It's I, I, I can't I How cannot see I cannot see you ordering a seat for your dog and there's five dogs on the plane. <laughs> yeah, there are. Right, they'll do imagine? more than five dogs. Because they see, could. nobody thinks that their dog is the issue either. No, it's so everyone they just else's take dog, their isn't it? dog well, on and then there'll be arguments about get that dog on a what, get that dog on a lead. Well, we we send the dog over. What's what's what wrong with well, being in the cabin? Yeah, well, that's the thing. You're underneath. You checked in as cargo, aren't you? Cargo. But here yeah. they say that. There's 
assistance dogs that can fly on planes and also service dogs that are allowed on airlines. That's fine. That's fine. But now they're saying, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to have a designated um, dog and pet area. Oh, that would so, be my favourite yeah, area. Of this the plane. would include fake grass, a rocked area, <laughs> and possible kitty litter. So that you can take your pets on the plane. That will never happen. It will never. It's not ever allowed happen. to sit on the owner's lap. And to start with, if the dog is small, you can just pop it under the seat in front. Tell you what, it is the dog area when Tom Wyvie and, and Michael Whipfley get together up oh the front of the plane God. when they're going overseas. <laughs> well, is where a... would you rather sit? Oh, oh, it's it's my God. between two <laughs> whippers. Yeah. And um, have you done an overseas <laughs> trip with the big fella yet? No. We did. Oh, mate, you oh, are okay. in for a treat. Could you imagine oh, oh my dreams come, come true. true can you imagine the smell you Between know when Tom they talk and I, no you know when they, the they talk about when you open that plane door and you've been on an international and the yep. poor person who gets the first whiff Oof. of all oh. the air can you imagine if it's then had oh. like a labrador and a cocker spaniel you, you can't what if you what if your dog does back one out on well, the plane? It's, well, that's, it's that's meant horrific. to be. It's meant to be um, sort of allocated for in a way in this little area, <laughs> and there's going to be an animal friendly terminal facility. Well, you can't they, even you, get, you can't even get a human to do it properly into the toilet, as no. if a dog's <laughs> going to be. It's, they would have to scan the dogs as they go through customs too, wouldn't they? In case someone had whacked something up the dog's jaxie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to imagine. Do you mean their tweezers? <laughs> The beastie, knife. beastie the chocolate spurtle rocks up with oh a bodyboard bag. God. What's he what's, <laughs> what's what's on it? The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. This is a fascinating story. What is Fascina- it? Uh, look, it's a sa- very sad story because you may have seen it on the news last night. It was the head story. Um, the man that unfortunately passed away who got home at 2am in the morning in Mount Pritchard here in, in Sydney oh, yeah. and fell asleep in the middle of the road. He was quite intoxicated and you can see CCTV footage of him walking down the mm-hmm. road quite drunk and he's laid down in the middle of the road. Now, he's been hit by a car and the car hasn't stopped. It's a hit and run incident. So I'm going to give you the heads up, right? This happened 2 a.m. early yesterday morning, okay? So yesterday morning, the police on the street in Mount Pritchard, which is Pritchard Street and Hempfoot Avenue, they did a press conference asking the community for any information. Mm, If mm. anyone's got any information, please come forward. But it was this story is crazy because as the police are doing the press conference, something happened. Have a listen to this. Is everyone ready to go? As the camera adjusts, police send a clear message to the person responsible. Attend your local police station or contact us immediately. Um, we, we really need to speak to you and we'd, we'd appeal to your conscience. Hand yourself in. Yeah. But captured in the background, the man police are looking to speak to. They just didn't know it yet. Most of the, the houses in the street do have CCTV and we're working through that at this time. One piece of CCTV police hadn't seen before the press conference is this. It shows a black Lexus driving up the same street. The indicator is flicked on, then at the end of the clip you can hear a loud bang. And this is the moment Nine News shows police that video. It's the piece of evidence they were after. Turns out they didn't have to search far. Within the crime scene, some 10 metres from where the man was hit, the black Lexus is parked in a driveway. Detectives search under the car and speak with the alleged owner. Less than two hours later, he's being led away by authorities. That property and that black sedan in the driveway now forming a central part of this investigation. So the guy who hit him Mm -hmm. parks his car in his house. The police set up the next morning. There's a local he guy. He gets interviewed by Channel 9 and said, I was asleep, I don't know, I didn't see, I didn't see anything. So the, in the background of the police is the mm. guy that hit the man and he's just going about his business in his yard. So they find the car, they go and arrest the guy, right? Mm. And then he's now being charged for, you know, manslaughter yep, or, hit or whatever, run. hit and run. And then, have a listen to this, there's an update. They go into the guy's house, check the guy's house. Mm -hmm. While he's in there, there's an update on it. Facing three charges relating to his driving, including dangerous driving, occasioning death. 
But in yet another twist, he's also been charged with knowingly deal with the proceeds of crime. That's because police will allege they seized almost $1 million in cash from his home. What? So is he a builder, is he? He's <laughs> that is an extraordinary story. I mean, he was going to be caught because everyone's got CCTV footage, right? Yes. So there's cameras everywhere. So that's going to be captured. The car would be captured and they'd track it. Little do you know he lives across the road. And he's got a million dollars in cash in his house. What is going on I there? I don't even know what that looks like. And got any more on this story? No. Uh, look, there's there's a couple of rumours and a few things flying around, but I'm Are reluctant there? to say anything online yet. Can you, can you throw an allegedly in before you make the comment no, and give us more? No, let's not do that. <laughs> Sounds it's... slightly criminal. But is it a huge case of karma? Oh, I don't know what happened First there. of all, when you... I mean, he would have hit that yep. person and would have known and gone back. In that moment, you instantly ring the police yep. and say, look, this guy was asleep on the road. I've, I've accidentally hit him. But he's then obviously... He's freaked out and said, well, I can't have the cops around. No, of course. Because i got a million dollars in cash in the house. I don't even know what that looks like. But my thing, too, is in those hours, wouldn't you do, if you know police are going to be swarming around your house, do a bit of a clean-up or dig a hole in the backyard? Yeah. Like, whack some of that cash in there? That's <laughs> just, just leaving it in Allegedly. The house. No, you did Alleg- right. Sorry, you did, no, that's what you would do, Em. <laughs> Thanks very much. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver! Well, his life hack is work on your voice and you make a ton of money. The face tattoos as well is also a good tip. Yeah, That's if all else fails, act. tattoo your face. Yeah. Do you know what? We're going to go it. to some callers here, but Kate Ritchie, I know that you've done a lot of work for Life Improver today. I don't know what's going on, but well, you are fizzing at the ding hole. Well, oh my goodness. <laughs> so visual. Um, I, uh, yes, I, I do. It's nothing to do with the ding hole. I know. Uh, all I want to do is go into the drawer for first class and 50k. Oh, right, so that the, the best way to do that was to take calls with Life Improvers yeah. uh, and then I have my own You're that I pull through. that I actually want to show you if that's oh, okay. Right, Ronan in Camden, life hack for us, Ronan. Good morning. Hi. So, what's your life on hack? On the right? trade platform, where the screens are, there's the coloured blocks. Yeah. Turns out they actually mean something. So, so if it's green, that means there's space in the train. If it's orange, it means it's busy. If it's red, don't even bother. Oh, oh I, didn't I, I didn't know. I've seen the coloured blocks, Ronan. So. So if they're orange, orange or red, you might struggle to get onto the train. Where are the blocks? Yeah, red means yeah, you're not having it. Just orange the screens. Means, you know, you're probably standing up. Oh, do you know what? Green means you've got to see. There's cer- oh, thanks, and there's buddy. certain stops yeah. when you're sort of last in line that you know you're no chance of getting on. No, forget about it. Oh yeah, where they change. Up. I like oh. to. I like to get a run up from about what? twenty meters and just dive into it. In there, Alex, and you're going to welcome to the show. Give us your life hack. Hi, and my life hack is that I use crayons to make my room smell better. Use crayons to make your room? How do you do that? Yeah. So um, the crayons, because they last, I, I saw this on a TikTok. It, it was actually a, um, a life hack that the crayons could last 30 minutes if there was um, no candles so they could light up. And because I like the smell of crayons, so they, they actually... Um, made my room smell a bit more better. Oh, so you light the well. crayons? You light it, yeah. And yeah, then, I, I enjoy the, the smell of crayons. Uh, right. And Alex, like, then your bedroom <laughs> smells like an early and, learning centre. And the pictures of feet. <laughs> Alex is actually in year, <laughs> Alex is in year four. Mm. And, no, that's um, cute. Thank you, that's Alex. Great. Now, we'll, we'll pass your number on to the police, Alex. <laughs> Michelle <laughs> in Blacktown, give us a life hack. So I've got a partner that is a lover of a hoarder, and generally when I'm trying to get rid of stuff, like we're get, we're going to get into fights about, yeah. like, you know, why do you want to throw away my stuff? Mm. So eventually I got pissed off. I just chucked it away. And we've been together seven years now. And he has been asked me about it. What I figured is that what he doesn't know yeah. or he do- what he doesn't remember, it's not going to hurt him. Yeah, and true. I was thinking... Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Michelle, this is actually just great for life in general. I don't know if it's a, a life hack. Mm. It's just a way of existing. Yeah. <laughs> God, what's this old watch that your grandfather gave you? I might just Ooh. burn it. Yeah, but well, think right. about the amount of boxes in garages that you would not even know what's in them. Oh, Kate, Kate Ritchie's place looks like a Kennard storage centre. That's how much of a hoarder you, you are. are. never invited to my house again. <laughs> you should see I'm the going garage. through a transition. <laughs> <laughs> Makes your job easy. What to become a man. <laughs> Cameron in Clovelly, what's your life hack? Uh, my life hack is um, when you're travelling t- when you're travelling and you're at the airport and you've got like carry on luggage, um, what you do is you wait until like the flight attendant, you know, at the jet start check in or whatever, when the flight attendant's busy or maybe you use one of your kids to distract them. Yeah. And then you grab a handful of those tags and uh, you put it straight on your bag. And yeah. so then the next time you travel, you don't have to get your bag weight or anything. You've got a stack of them at home. You just put it on and straight through. Ah, oh, that's sort of misleading. The weight for the weight of the plane. That's yeah. <laughs> exactly. When the plane goes down, yeah, it's on you, it's brother. your backpack, Cameron. <laughs> Kate, are we going to get your life hack now? Well, well, do you want to choose somebody and then you can go to well, me? Because I doubt I'm going to win with mine, but it's very good. They're all in the running, Kate. Yep. Oh, Ryan okay. the running. Alex, Michelle, Cameron. Or what have you got? All right, I've got one. My sister sent this to me on TikTok because we do love the odd uh, Peking duck pancake. Oh, now we're talking. And will you want to do when you're eating Peking duck is get it in your mouth as quickly as possible. Yep. So delicious. Warm Adam or pancake. Ruben, which one are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Um, <laughs> so anyway, my sister sent me this video. Have a look at how this woman eats a Peking duck. Okay, you can see the video on our she Instagram She holds the right pancake now. up to her face. Oh my God. And then, <laughs> so she doesn't fold the pancake no. on the plate and put the duck and everything in it. She holds the pancake up to her like face. Like it's a mask. And then basically stuffs and the put- food Puts into the a mouth. cucumber and the duck yeah. o- over the top of the peking duck and takes one big grab. And it's just one big mouth and you're not holding not it bad. like a little taco. It's actually not bad. So I thought the best thing to do would be mm, is to go it. and indulge in my own peking duck and I try to oh, yes, have a look. Richie. This is me. Oh. Look at there her she go. goes. Putting the duck oh. into the pancake. Oh, look at the size of that the mouth. The pancake is over the mouth. Oh, I goodness. struggled my chopstick. Oh, <laughs> she's, my she's t- dropped the cucumber down the front. Oh, my God, what a mess. It's actually brilliant. I think it's on Instagram, our, our socials right now. Have a look at it. Great. Oh, my God. And if you think you can do it better... I mean, let's just see, because I brought the leftovers oh, from this. dinner last night no and way. you guys are going to have a go at it yes. next. Ollie, come into the studio. Duck pancakes for breakfast, guys. I love this. Halfway through the life hack and Kate Ritchie has won our hearts this morning. She's brought in Peking Duck Pancake. I have. I have decided to hand over my duck pancake to Tommy this morning. I ate plenty of Thank it last you. night with the second course of Sang Joy Bao. Oh, oh, uh, so I am well and truly done. I saw the life hack on TikTok where the woman just holds the pancake up to her face yep. and pushes and the, the stuffing kind of into the mouth. Okay. So it's all enclosed like a it. bit of a... A, a Chinese burrito. Yes, you've got to she fill does the it hole. Very smoothly, isn't it? She oh, does. No. You, we you sh- struggled, Kate, with your effort. We, we thought we'd have a go. Streaming live on the Fitz and Whipper Inst- you want me to go first? Instagram page. I think you could do it all together, do you think? Hold it up to your top lid. Lizzie, Lizzie wants to film each Oh, one. you are. Oh, does she? Go. Okay, so I'm going first. Yeah, sure. Sure. You get the I don't know about this as a broadcast. <laughs> well, that's why we should do it together. Go. I agree. Yeah. So what I'm going to do no, you've, is no. put my duck into the sauce first. Hold, keep holding the pancake oh. until you put the duck into your mouth. Yeah. Uh, 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 Actually, Fitz is quite successful, but that's because he's got the biggest mouth. Oh, he's dropped the cucumber. Look at the tongue on Whipper holding it all in there. That's actually disgusting. Oh, that is disgusting. Oh, yuck. No. Oh, oh, oh no. You got a bit of hoisin on your white T-shirt. Well, that was always going to happen. Tommy, Tommy's... Um, there we go! You know, you know, Tommy's got huge lips. For anyone who hasn't seen... Oh, Tommy! Hoisting oh, no. on the base shirt! Oh, no. 
That is. I have to say, my first attempt is up on Instagram right now, and I think I was superior to all of oh, you, but maybe well I've done. just eaten some more. I love a succulent more. Chinese <laughs> meal. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Wouldn't it be nice to have a happy relationship? Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> do they exist? No, nah, I'm in love. We love love. Uh, well, I, I'm sure they do out there. But then you hear people say that um, if you look at a relationship and you think it's perfect and they make out as though everything's going fine, they're lying. Yeah. There's always there's always something. And we have so many lists that we go through on this show about what are the signs that a relationship yeah. is doomed. I mean, yeah. cheating, of course, yes. Do you yes. reckon? It's yeah. right, well, it's right. I mean, try it. See <laughs> that, how you that, go. Nah. That, other, that other woman on the end of that Ooh. guy's tongue is one of the yeah. reasons yeah. that the relationship... Yeah. I didn't... Everything was going so... So fine until I. You know that audio of the woman talking about the accident that happened? And it's just a serious piece and there's sad music. And then she says, Oh, she, he fell. And he tripped and he fell into the secretary's yeah. <laughs> yeah. space. <laughs> Area. A new one my wife started doing, which has been great for the relationship, because you don't want to take your work home, but I'm halfway through a story, and she starts going like this with her finger, oh, doing, doing circles Tommy, in the air. Doing saying, Tommy Ivy, wind it up. <laughs> wind it up. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. so proud of her. She did it this morning. Wind it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I think a lot of people think the wind up in their head. Would that come under the banner I've, of, of honesty, contempt? I've, contempt. Yeah. I've done the wind up to BJ before. I hates it with a passion. Oh, well, there's nothing so more up. irritating. Get to the point. Oh. Yeah. This is my story. Yeah, get to the point. Yeah, you get to tell stories all morning, yeah. Fitzy. Everyone, ha- well, in fact, people have to listen to you. Give me a bit of respect. Going back to the contempt. So <laughs> don't um, wind me up. <laughs> Please don't wind me up. I'm going to do this quickly because I do love a relationship story going into the weekend because mm-hmm. you're going to have some more time with your partner and maybe these are the things that you need to um, think about. It's not a list necessarily. It is, it's just the fact of, of contempt okay. is, does mean that your relationship is doomed. Now, if you don't know what contempt is, <laughs> have a look in the studio. Um, <laughs> contempt, it's often the biggest relationship killer. It's the predictor of um, uh Divorce. Yep. Contempt is the attitude or feeling towards someone that they are worthless or beneath mm. consideration as if the person is inferior. So you might have mm. anger or resentment towards them. Mm. Um, and you can see how that is going to kill any relationship. Come and man, it's going to be. have never treated me like this. <laughs> it's going to be very hard to resolve problems in the relationship if you're often thinking they're, they're a bit they're stupid. A waste of space. I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. It's a silent kill killer, guys. You've got to be aware of this negative Mm behaviour. So listen up. Don't roll your eyes. Don't wind up the story when they're bothering to tell you something that they care about. Don't mock them. Don't have a condescending laugh around them like Mm. it's kind of cute. (laughs) uh, That's my word, Kate. Cute. Quite often you'll do something and go, (laughs) that's cute. But you don't mean cute. I you certainly mean it's, do not. No, you mean it's sad. Tragic. Casually saying you're so stupid. Or oh, that you, you can't you know, say that. You embarrass... Well, you can't. I, I actually think name-calling, even cute names that you're, you're under the guise of like, yeah. oh, this is a joke, never name-call. No. Even with, even with kids in the house. Jack called me fat at dinner last night. Why? I'm going to take him down to the track on the weekend. And outrun him. Oh, gee, oh you're throwing that out. No, no, oh, yeah, you're throwing no. that out and at every gonna, small child. No, if I'm going to race against that six-year-old who's got the world record, I need to train. I'm going to teach Jack a lesson for calling me fat. I'll work him to the ground. Anything else on your list? Um, don't want <laughs> 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 Nothing else on the list there? Absolutely not. Uh, okay. I don't care if your relationship fails. Oh, thanks, mate. Fitz in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.